we're live because I got the Twitter notification. We're live. Hey, I'm going to jump up for a second. I need to turn on one light that I failed to do. I'll be right back. You got the reins. Well, I will just talk about you and how ill prepared you are at, you know, but we did make the time at seven o'clock straight up. We weren't late, but technically you are late because you're not ready. <laughs> but hello, everybody. Let us know in the comments that you're here. We're uh, glad that uh, you're going to spend a little time with us this evening. I wonder how many people spent time watching uh, Trump and Elon last night. I mean, I, I know at one point they were like, well, they were talking and I'm looking at the screen and it's like, I think 20 something million. But Elon says, uh, yeah, we've got just about 60 million right now. Oh. I don't know. I don't know where he got his number from, but hey, we're happy when we get sixty, singular, uh, not in the millions. If if we got six hundred, we'd be ecstatic. Sixty million, that's scaling a little bit. Can you imagine? And he he said the day before he said we're going to test scaling X, and damn if they didn't do it. Yeah, they did. Well, we're up to uh, about twenty eight people, 30 people and climbing so far. I haven't shared anything out. And I just posted the event listing a couple of hours ago. So probably not everybody's got their notifications. Um, I do see our guest waiting in the wing. So we'll have Miss Jill Hines on here in a little bit. Um, what are we going to talk about? Well, uh, as far as Jill, we might get a little bit of an update on, you know, the the legal uh, shenanigans, as you say. Maybe I shouldn't say shenanigans. The shenanigans are on the part of uh, the corrupt, evil, you know, dark side. I know she won't say that, but I'll say that. <laughs> but uh, we'll get her take, you know, kind of on all that. And then uh, there, there's some things regarding... Uh, your schools and the forms when kids, you know, kids are going back to school now. And I, I saw uh, Health Freedom had, had put out kind of a, a informational thing regarding some of the forms that they're getting parents to sign. And I think it's pretty important that parents need to understand, you know, like with the exemptions. And then if you also sign this other form, you know, th they should have some questions and then they, they may not even understand it, but she's the authority. We're going to get her to explain it. And I'm going to quit butchering that. Oh, well, Hey, you're doing a fine job of butchering. Um, all right. So, and we need to let everybody know that the city council meeting has not reposted on YouTube where we can get to it and do our commentary. Maybe they'll get it up there any minute. I mean, I'm not going to put on my tinfoil hat and say they're doing this on purpose, but I think they're doing it on purpose. So we'll have to kind of work our way through it and we'll give everybody the well, update, the summary version of the meeting. Well, what would be the reason that they would not want the public to see the video from today? I can't Gosh. imagine what of what importance, you know, something was on the agenda today. I can't imagine what that was. It's one of, hint, it's one of our topics listed right over there or wherever it is on my screen. So, all right. So why don't we go ahead? Let's do, you want to do the countdown, the break? You want me to just announce that and we'll start talking? How do y'all folks want to do it? Let us know in the comments. Should we do our three minute countdown for popcorn and drinks or should we just start Getting into it. Which one do y'all want to do? Let us uh, know in the comments. I don't know. I, I think we need to share it a little bit because I think there's uh, some folks that want to hear this. And I, I believe I would like to take the opportunity myself to share it um, to make sure yeah. as many people get informed on this. I think it's important. Well, Matthew Smith says start, but we're going to outvote you this time. We're going to do the quick break about three, three and a half minutes. Again, that gives y'all time to share and tag and Hopefully it gives folks time to get their notifications on Facebook and YouTube and all that. We will be right back and uh, we'll get started and we'll have Jill Hines on in just a few minutes. And we're going to talk about kids and vaccines. And you know what? I'm all for vaccinations, especially for the city council. They need it. Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> 
Okay, here we go. A uh, new countdown. Folks, y'all know the drill. Start tagging and sharing. Get the popcorn going. Get the drinks ready. We'll be back in about three minutes. New, a lot of the back office on the politicians that they think walk on water, uh, they would be shocked. You know, there's an old wound from a knife in my back that just is giving me heck lately, and it's just really irritating, so I have to kind of wiggle around a little bit. Well, I, I've not heard my name in stable or Baton Rouge in stable in the same sentence in a long time. And I titled it a shot across the bow of the good old boys. Just, you know, they feel helpless, they don't feel heard, they have nowhere to turn. Some Republicans as well believe that government has the answers. And let me tell y'all something, I don't know anything government does well, nothing. And aren't there laws that say that you have public meetings so that the public can have accountability of their elected officials? They're making a little bit of progress, but I would definitely have to give, uh, give the race to Caddo Parish right now. Yeah. I don't know, is there anybody from Plain Dealing watching, you think? As a member of the media, I'm very concerned about the what I've just heard. Did you or did you not requisition uh, the money to fight against this or for you? We hire a, uh, a lobbyist and it cost us fifteen thousand dollars. We were opposed to HB HB six thousand. So for this week, folks, the cockroach of the week, according to Bozier Watch and Duke Lowry and Rex Moncrief, is. Raymond Croon's legislative assistant, <laughs> Allie Feaster-Smith. Thank you, Allie. <laughs> well, I'm not thinking Star Wars at all. I'm thinking <laughs> zombie apocalypse. No way, okay, it was not okay. David. You know it wasn't David Montgomery. David okay. ain't gonna jump off in there with Chris. Okay. He's gonna do it. He'd soon spit on him as he would even look at him. Man, this is a Mickey D's Krispy Kreme wheat, didn't you know? Who, who's paying y'all, and if you're driving on the roads, are you safe? Uh, it's on the road, yeah. Well, I know you're on the road, but, I mean, is this all folks coming from the border down there? Yeah, it's going to the border. It's actually going to Mexico, it buzzes. Doesn't mean they interpret it the same way that I do. For instance, the Second Amendment. I take it very literally. That's been interpreted different ways in the court system all the way up to SCOTUS. Yeah, that's only going to cause more division that he claims he doesn't want to cause. And it's only going to cause more suspicion. We're still right now combined on both pages in YouTube at 264 people watching. That is amazing. Bo Coleman Project, the Walker Place deal through conscious shocking actions. The purpose of their actions was to stop plaintiffs, being the Earl Coleman and, and Associated Groups not, from developing Walker Place. But here's a key thing, which in turn would enrich sitting city council members Scott Irwin and David Montgomery Jr. You hit the button, does that mean that uh, people are like seeing us sitting here talking? Well, in theory, you know, it's an every week thing. We've got to double check and make sure it's like a miracle. Any of this actually works. This live broadcast is brought to you by The Outdoor News, fishing and outdoors for our area. Acadiana Mortgage, over 25 years in the mortgage business. Pelican Training and Consulting, reach out to Julie Ferris. Smarter Geek, making technology easier and folks sharing information and watching out. Now, grab your popcorn and a drink. Here we go. And I'm not going to say it, but here we are. Well, I, I did not seize the opportunity and get any more popcorn, although I do have a drink. It is not stiff, but I intentionally did that because I think that there needs to be a higher level of focus on the content to which we're going to discuss. I think so, and I don't even have a thing of water. I may have to grab one of them. I'm just ill-prepared tonight. I had to leave and turn on lights, and now I'm going to have to leave and jump over there and get me a thing of water out of my little man fridge. So so let me set the stage. As as everybody is getting their tax notices and they're you know starting to get sick to their stomach um, as they see the uh, effects of... Um, reassessment of their properties and they see that increase and then you know 
I think in the near term, they start to see the effects of all of their local government bodies, uh, see that all of their taxes are rolled forward. Um, you know, I think they're going to pay, want to pay a little bit more attention to every different local government. And, you know, that's not just, uh, city government that's not just police juries but that also goes into school boards and some of the things and moves that they're making as well too and i'm no tax expert but i think the school board is like one of the largest taxing authorities that there are in most parishes yeah and and i think that's the case all across the state and you know uh something came across my radar here not long ago you know because school's getting back going the kids are getting wound up to to go and i I saw a couple of news flashes you know specifically here in bozier about how the bozier parish school system was having this you know new health care thing for students and all that stuff you know the days of just having a school nurse or either rubbing a little bit of red man or you know hawkeye or whatever it was (laughs) on it um, them, them days are gone. Um, they, they got full medical staffs, it seems like now. And I, I don't, I don't completely know where I'm at on all of that, but. Well, it's way different than when you and I were kids, there's zero doubt. But fortunately we do have a guest on that. I don't know. I would consider a kind of an expert on the subject. Shall we bring th- her on? Let's do it. Drum roll, please. Uh, well, hold on. Let's see. I got to click this button. And I am just not, not on you're, my you're point just, tonight. You're Hold just on. trying to make sure that people know we're amateurs. I mean, that, and... that's right. If, if Got to keep up the persona here. All right, there we go. <laughs> Jill, can you hear us? I can hear you. Oh, great. And we can hear you. That's always a great thing. <laughs> bonus. Yeah, so, bonus. Uh, Jill, I, I saw y'all with Help Freedom, and, and for a lot of people, I mean, I think everybody knows, most of our audience knows who you are, but for those of you that don't know who Jill is, I mean, she's a Bozier person, but she's more famous for being one of the head honchos of Health Freedom Louisiana. She is one of the people that is in the trenches down in the legislature, and not just there across the country fighting for you, fighting for your kids, especially regarding medical issues that I would argue have been adverse to a lot of people. And she even got herself mixed into the national stage with the Supreme Court and the attempt by the government to silence you and and to prevent you from being able to get the facts. Did I describe that good enough? Very well. (laughs) Okay. Very well. Yeah, we've been um, pretty active. Health Freedom Louisiana is, um, I think, one of the only groups in the state that is focused solely on parental rights, informed consent, and an individual's right to say no to an unwanted medical intervention. And of course, COVID uh, pushed us to the forefront on that. We were, um, of course, uh, had been set up prior to COVID. Uh, Health Freedom Louisiana, we established in 2019, but my business partners had been working in the state protecting parental rights under the moniker Louisiana Parents for Vaccine Rights for several years years before that. Um, So, yeah, we have a great health freedom community here in Louisiana, and I'm um, proud to to work with them. So what is the, it's back to school time. Yep. Yep. And, you know, we do kind of did a little tease about the school board there and relating to tax dollars. They're one of the biggest taxing authorities, most parishes. So what are we getting? How much bang are we getting for our bucks with the school board with back to school? Well, at, at some schools, it's not every school. But some schools have like a Cadillac of healthcare prov- provided to their students on campus. Um, back in 1991, the Louisiana legislature passed legislation that allows what's called school based health centers on some of our larger campuses. There are currently 57 in the state of Louisiana. I think you're about to get one in Bossier Parish, if I'm not mistaken. Somebody made me aware of it. Uh, Lisa Allen may be aware of that not too long ago. Um, So be on the lookout for it. um, And if at all possible, 
I would fight it. We see this as a tremendous threat to parental rights. I mean, when would you ever drop your child off at the, you know, the doctor's door and say, you know, I'll see you later. Let me know how it goes. We would never do that rationally, right? Um, we've always attended our children's um, doctor's appointments, their mental health assessments. We may have well, sat on the lobby while they got their teeth cleaned, but we were there with them. But let but me interject for a minute. Let me interject mm -hmm. for a minute. So <laughs> there's got to be a, a nefarious purpose to this, and I'm being a little facetious with that, but not much. So no, not much. is this just like, you know, when I was in school, you could go down to the nurse's station and half the time it was the guidance counselor or the vice principal or whatever, you know, if you happen to cut yourself or scrape Wait the knee minute. or Hold something up. like that. Is this you what we're a, talking about? Hold, hold up. You had a nurse's station at your school? Not really a nurse's station, but you could go down there. And, and there were some schools that had nurse's stations back in the day, but it wasn't like a full-fledged RN in there. So we didn't, is that we didn't, the nurse's station I had was Harold Harlan with a big old paddle and dude Hensley, the <laughs> size of a laptop. That explains <laughs> a lot right there. <laughs> we didn't have no illness back then. <laughs> No, it's it's not the the nurses station like you and I remember when we were kids. Um, it's a completely different. It's a complete health center on these school campuses, oh. these larger school campuses. They can get mental health assessments done. Um, they can get routine immunizations. Whoa, 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 whoa! Stop. You said mental health assessments done. Yes. Okay, let me tell a little quick story and I will try to condense this down to under 30 seconds. So uh, when my twin boys were younger and they were in elementary school, they went to Waller Elementary in Bossier. I One did them, too. Okay, which was literally, you could see the school from our backyard. One of them got in a fight one day because another kid cut in line. He tried to avoid the fight, but the kid pushed him and so it was a big dog pile and all that. Long story made short, so... That afternoon, my wife gets a phone call, need her to come to the school to have a discussion about this with Michael. And so she gets to the school. Well, she called me. I had, I turned around what I was doing. I showed up. We got in there. We had the school psychiatrist, the principal, the vice principal, and the guidance counselor and the teacher on duty all ganged up against my wife. And then I showed up. And you can imagine how well that went over. I threatened to put them all on billboards and make fun of them and all that and pay for the billboards. So what do you mean? And I told the, the school psychiatrist, psychologist, whatever she was, I said, if you talk to my child one more time without me or my wife present, I will put you on a billboard. I promise you I'll pay for it. What is the deal? What is the deal with this? I mean, why do we, how are we affording? Well, it's a silly question. I know how we're affording. This. All right. <laughs> Dive into that topic. Sorry to put on the brakes, but I want to go into more about this mental health thing. Sure. It sounds exactly like what it is. Um, they have um, the capability of assessing your child's mental health at these facilities. Now, granted, the reason that we drew attention to these consent forms earlier in the week is that the parent has to consent to it. And we want parents to make sure that they're reading every form that comes home from the school to make sure that they're, they know what they're consenting to. Um, and they don't have to consent to this. It's not a given. The parents have to consent to it. Our concern, of course, is uh, what's known as implied consent. Um, this is a term that we became familiar with years ago the World Health Organization advocates for implied consent. And basically when a parent consents to something at the beginning of the year, they have consented to it for the remainder of the year. And if their child is on campus, consent is implied. Hmm. So for us, that is an incredibly dangerous thing. We think that parents need to be made aware immediately prior. That we think that parents should be at every um, at medical assessment with their child regardless. Yeah, unless it's an, a, an outright emergency. You know, they cut their, right. half cut right. their arm off or something like that. Now, so, right. so well, hold up, Rex. You can't have I'm, I'm, I'm full of questions on this, dude. Uh, 
Okay. So one thing, uh, Horatio Brooks in the comments posted that Bozier High or Bozier, you know, has something going and he's correct. They do have something going. And, but I think what Bozier did is I think Bozier did a partnership uh, with a, a group who is also doing something uh, in Caddo with a bunch of the Caddo, the, is it the Johnny Gray Jones people? Or I, I can't remember the name of it. I'll look at it in a minute. But they partnered with with this, and what caught my attention, and I and we have uh, Health Freedoms form the the Substack article, and we have the form. So if if somebody files an exemption on the vaccines, right, but then they get this form sent, and then they fi- sign this form giving the school consent, mm-hmm. are they not contradicting the? original exemption that they may have filed on behalf of their kid for vaccines? I mean, don't, well, don't these forms conflict? They, they do in some instances. Now, a parent may um, submit a written dissent or an exemption for vaccination for um, a particular vaccine, but not for all. Not every parent is opposed to all vaccines. For example, a child may have had an, uh, an adverse reaction to I don't know, a, a MMR vaccine. So they've decided no more MMR, but they're not opposed to any others. So in that case, they're not going to conflict if the parent signs this consent form. But the point that we raise is, especially with vaccinations, there's a federal law. There's a federal law called the National Childhood Vaccine Injury Act. And these um, beginning of the year consent forms conflict with federal law. That National Childhood Vaccine Injury Act, of course, is the same legislation, it's federal legislation that removes liability for vaccine manufacturers and and administering physicians from any liability for injury or death associated with the administration of a vaccine. So as part of that removal of liability, um, they stated in the legislation in that federal law that prior to, immediately prior to vaccination, a parent should be hand or legal guardian guardian, should be given what's called a VIS, a vaccine information sheet, immediately prior to vaccination. So what these informed consent forms do at the beginning of the year, um, you're consenting to a, a vaccination clinic that may take weeks or months in the future. And in doing so, that violates this federal law, uh, the National Childhood Vaccine Injury Act, because the parent is not receiving in person this VIS immediately prior to a vaccination. And I don't even know if these schools or or these clinics are actually sending home a form either at the beginning of the year or immediately prior, I'm not sure, but I know the parent's not there when they do um, these vaccination clinics on school campuses. And so our concern, yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Yes. So I've been paying attention to comments. So maybe I just didn't hear. Uh, yeah. And I think Mayor Peace is falling out too. But anyway, so they're doing like, not only is this, or this isn't like a nurse's station if they get hurt or something, they're having vaccination clinics at the school. Oh, yes. And that's been, that's been going on for years now. Um, actually, there was a case that came up during COVID because a child, I believe it was down in Jefferson Parish, was um, administered a COVID vaccine on school campus um, in direct opposition to parental consent. The parents had already said no, and um, the child was convinced on, on school campus to get a, a COVID vaccine. And that one was litigated in the courts and the school and the clinic um, settled with the family. Um, so, yeah, this has been going on for, for quite a while now. All right. What if they don't, what if you don't consent? So as a parent, which all my kids are out of school, they're unfortunately not out of my house yet, but anyway, that's a whole other story. So yep. what if I, as a parent don't consent to my child with these vaccinations or this free health clinic, deal what happens then what are the repercussions in theory you should have nothing to worry about um but we have seen uh, maybe you have seen um the court case that came up uh, recently in vermont and also another court case in north carolina 
uh, specifically in regards to COVID vaccinations, because COVID vaccinations, you know, are still covered under PrEP, the PrEP Act. Um, and so these two children were uh, vaccinated against parent parental wishes on school campuses. And the court, when the parents sued, the courts in those two states, Vermont and North Carolina, both determined um, that the school had no liability in that situation because the, the vaccines wow. are still covered under PrEP. Now, wow. there is one court case here in Louisiana, the one I mentioned to you, where the child was administered a COVID vaccine against parental wishes in Jefferson Parish. And that judge determined that PrEP did not apply. So I'm, I'm confused about these different federal courts and how um, they're not, there is a, you know, a, a caveat within PrEP that says that any, anyone that acts without, uh, um, with willful negligence, they're not immune from their actions. And in my opinion, those um, adults that are administering vaccines uh, directly in opposition to parental wishes are acting with will willful negligence. But the, the judge deemed otherwise in two, in two separate cases, one in Vermont and one in North Carolina. So I have reached out to one of our congressmen to see if we can address that federally where it does need to be addressed. PrEP itself just needs to be repealed. It is a monster piece of lit litigation that has re really given um, free reign for people to act um, hmm. awfully over the last several if only, years. <laughs> if only we had a high-ranking congressman that could help push some legislation to repeal that through. Gosh, but you don't, you don't have to address that, Jill. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're hopeful that something will be done. Well, you know, the, the, the argument that I hear for, for all of this medical care, you know, going through the schools is that there are so many kids that are going, you know, without medical care uh, and that, you know, we need to incorporate that. It, it will increase them being in school. It'll prevent them from being as sick. And I mean, that's the kind of, I, I guess that's the pro school people argument, you know, is that, Hey, we're trying to help the kids. We're trying to, I, what, what do you say to that, Jill? I mean, cause it, you got to admit that kind of tugs at your heartstrings. Oh, and if yeah. you, if you look at some of these stories, it looks like it's for more of the impoverished parts of our, you know, society that it, it's targeted towards that. I mean, I don't know. What, what What is your thoughts on it? Well, uh, what's the best way, um, in my opinion, it's the best uh, foot in the door for socialized medicine. Um, and, um, you know, a lot of philanthropic entities feel the same way. One of the major funders of these uh, school-based health centers is the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Mm, They're I'll pumping imagine. millions of dollars into these um, facilities. And of course, uh, the majority of the funding comes from the, uh, the federal government. So it's not local that um, that's funding these at all. It's, it's, it's the federal government and these entities like the Bill and Melinda Gates. And, and, and sure, they, they have, um, it sounds good. It sounds really good, doesn't it? But when, um, I, I know you gentlemen feel the same way as I do, the, the government's not responsible. We're, the government's not our daddy. It's, it's not our daddy, right? I'm shocked to learn that, Jill. <laughs> well, would, would, well, let me, let me, let me, let me twist this here a little bit. Would we be opposed to local churches doing this role? Well, I don't know that I would um, see a local church on a school campus. And our argument has always been set it up right next door. So a parent can be there, you know, if either at, the, and, and again, our argument is do it next door, set your hours either before school or after school when parents are either dropping them off or picking them up so that the child can be accompanied by their parent or legal guardian. I mean, and that's, you know, that's reasonable in our opinion. And, and so I can see a church being generous enough to do, uh, to do something like that. I don't see them doing it on a school campus because we're talking about public schools, private schools, charter schools. This uh, consent form that we uh, shared in our Substack is from a charter school in Lafayette. So educate me a little bit because it's been a while since my kids have been in school. We combination had them uh, or were homeschooling and public school, blah, 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 long story, but educate me a little bit. So okay. if the kid's sick, 
And uh, the kid goes to the nurse's station or the health clinic. And as mm -hmm. Jamie Marie Pope pointed out, schools and healthcare both run by the government. What could go wrong? Well, right. <laughs> if the kid's actually sick, aren't they generally just going to send the kid home or are they planning on keeping sick kids? Do they have an isolation ward now at the school? I mean, what is the deal? Let's look at this from a practical standpoint. Or is it just if the kid has a headache or doesn't feel good that day? Or No, I don't now, know. Rex, it depends on what state you're talking about because in New York, they, you know, converted the schools over to, you know, uh, illegal or no, not illegal migrant centers. So, you know, the migrants have to have health care. So we got to have health care facilities within the schools, because if you're going to have migrants there, you got to give them health care. May as well I mean, educate them along the way. Well, I or, see indo or indoctrinate, whichever way you want to look at it. We're killing two birds with one stone. And oh, by the way, if they just happen to be there on election day, then we'll even get their vote. I mean, that's yeah. dumb. Perfect. <laughs> What 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 more efficient way to do all of the shenanigans? <laughs> and I'm sure every school is different depending on the facilities and the availability of rooms. But I'm guessing, I would like to think that parents are responsible enough to pick up their child if their child is ill or that they just won't send them to school to begin with. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure exactly. I'm sure every school's facility um, has a, a separate policy depending on the availability of space. It was simple with my parents. You running no. a fever? No. Good. Stay in school. <laughs> yeah. I mean, now, now we're, we're the bad, you know, limited government people, you know, that because we're trying to take away health care from kids here, or that's what we're <laughs> discussing here. We're the yeah. bad guys. But I mean, isn't this is, I mean, what's next? Are public school systems, are they going to have title companies? Are they going to have, ID, IT departments that, you know, do your job, Rex. I mean, where does it, are they going to have dry cleaners? I mean, you, you gotta, you gotta be able to wash clothes and have dry cleaning there. I mean, where does it end? I mean, exactly. in all while public school, correct me if I'm wrong on the statistic, but public school enrollment is decreasing. You know, it's, it's kind of going down and people are moving away. Somebody put in the comments talking about homeschooling. We're seeing that trend is this not a last gasp of the public school system to try to burnish their resume? Hey, we can offer health care. Is that part of it? Well, I, I think it's becoming a one stop um, shop for everything. Um, it's money laundering. Want... I'm sorry. Money laundering. There, that too. And I don't want to offend anyone um, in public school, but I mean, it's daycare, uh, education, supposedly, and uh, your health care. What you don't even have to parent anymore, right? Um, so, <laughs> so, yeah, we just see this as incredible overreach. Um, the, the government, education, it's not there. Um, it, it, it has a purpose. It's to educate and not to medicate. Now, unfortunately, we do see uh, such an incredible rise in chronic health issues in our children. You know, greater than 54% of American children have some form of chronic illness, uh, anaphylaxis, allergy being one of them. We see that as a tremendous uh, trend in our children's health. So there are a lot of issues that need to be taken, uh, taken care of. I, I've seen pictures of just um, entire walls of EpiPens for children. Um, so that is an incredible concern. Things are expensive. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, it's not the government's role to have your children's, you know, to, to clean your children's teeth, um, to do mental health assessments. These are parents. Uh, this is the parent's job. So Rex, let's let's pull up that form real quick, and and I, I just want to show because it caught yeah. my attention. You know, in the you know vaccines was in there, and and medications as needed. The way they worded it, they worded it different. That's my words, right. but uh, that that gave me cause. My, my kids are out, but that even gave me cause for concern. And I was like, yeah. you know, I mean, I think parents need to see this, and they need to hear this for themselves. And immediately, the first thing I thought was. Uh, okay, well, if you file that exemption, would this, you know, nullify that? Right. Well, you know, one thing to be aware of, one of the incidences, I, I believe it was in Vermont, um, when the child was vaccinated against parental wishes, it was a six-year-old 
who was given the sticker, a name tag of another child. And even after he went in there saying, it's not me, I'm not supposed to do this. The, the healthcare worker at the school went ahead and vaccinated them anyway because of the sticker on the child's shirt. So I, parents just need to be concerned. If I, if there's a any kind, if I was a parent today and I had a child in a school like this, if I knew there was a, any kind of clinic like this, any kind of immunization clinic, I would keep my child home that day just to be on the safe side. I don't think there's any way I would risk that, especially, you know, with, <laughs> with what I do and with what I know. Um, so anyway, I, I think parents just need to be aware if they send in an exemption form, this should not in any way, um, you know, take any kind of priority over a, a, a parent's exemption form unless they sign that consent form. So just be incredibly careful about signing paperwork coming home from schools. Without a doubt. Okay, so what? So help, and for those of uh, for those folks watching that are that are new and maybe hadn't seen you as a guest before, Jill. Mm -hmm. So, kind of tell us what are you advocating people do? What action do people need to take based on what we've discussed this evening? Are you just advocating to be aware? Are you advocating for or against vaccinations? What's What's the Health Freedom Louisiana official position? Our official position on vaccinations. Um, well, it's going to be interesting in the year coming up. I think we may uh, change uh, gears a tad bit as more and more information is reaching the public that we have known about for years. Um, we have always uh, considered ourselves the friendly voice of vaccine choice. You know, whatever a parent deems appropriate for their child, um, you know, that's, that's fine for us. Uh, we want them to have informed consent and we don't want them to be coerced. And if you're coerced, you're not receiving informed consent. Uh, so that's one of the things that we have advocated for down at the Capitol. And I'm, I'm proud to say that we had some really good pieces of legislation that passed this year um, with, you know, Governor Landry now in the governor's seat. In the past uh, four years prior, we've had, I think, 10 bills vetoed. <laughs> And this year alone, we had 11 pieces of legislation that passed. And for your audience, they need to know that this year, schools starting August 1st with any kind of communication that mentions immunization requirements, uh, the school is also support, supposed to inform parents and students of their right to exempt from those requirements. That has been in place since the law was passed in 1990, um, and now schools are required by law to inform parents and students of that exemption option. Um, another thing that we had passed this year that we're really proud of, Louisiana is the only state to have legislation like this, and that is it prevents schools from discriminating or treating students differently who have um, who are not vaccinated or depending on their vaccination status. So we saw an incredible bias um, during COVID towards um, students who are unvaccinated and Representative Beryl Amade carried some legislation that prohibits discrimination um, against students uh, depending on their vaccination status. And that's from daycare all the way to colleges and universities. So we're very excited about that legislation. Uh, Representative Kathy Edmonston carried the first legislation that I mentioned and another piece of um, legislation that prohibits all schools, public and private, colleges and universities, it prohibits them from requiring um, or requesting information about COVID vaccinations. So we're very excited about that piece of legislation as well. Okay, I got one more question. So yes. clarify that in the state of Louisiana, or correct me if I'm wrong, in the state of Louisiana, mm -hmm. children are not required to have their vaccination. They can do this exemption. Is, is that correct? Correct. And let me put the, the legislation in its proper posture. We're trying to do to educate the public and legislature on this as well. Because for the last several years, I would say at least the last decade, um, we have heard messaging that implies the schools and the state can somehow compel parents to vaccinate their children, which is utter garbage. The state cannot compel any kind of medical intervention 
on um, your child to attend school. Okay, the way the law is written is it's asking for some medical information. It's asking for your child's immunization history. It's not compelling you. It's not saying you can't come to school until you get a vaccine, which is what a lot of these communications from schools say, literally say your kid, your child cannot come to school until they receive these vaccines. And then they even give them clinics where they can go get vaccinated, right? It's like these people are qualified to give us medical <laughs> advice and they're not. Um, so no, no child, no student in the state of Louisiana, and this is daycare, licensed daycares, uh, preschools, um, public private schools. We have a lot of pushback from uh, Catholic schools, but they're not immune from this legislation either. But every school in the state of Louisiana has to follow this law. Um, and all they're simply doing is asking for information about your child's immunization history. And Section E of RS 17170 says that you can simply dissent. You, you don't even have to, you can sign it on a napkin and turn it in and your child doesn't have to provide that information. Um, and so uh, I want to make a clarification too about forms because um, a lot of schools are using a form that the Louisiana Department of Education has provided or that Louisiana Department of Health, I believe it's the same form, has provided. You do not have to sign that form. We have a very generic form on um, our website, healthfreedomla.org, that we recommend because it doesn't have any other kind of compelled speech on the form. It's simply saying, no, I'm not per uh, turning in my child's immunization history. The form from LDOE and LDH um, has some additional information about in the event of an outbreak, my child will stay home. Um, and so I, I've always recommended don't, don't sign that form, sign our form. It doesn't have any kind of comp compelled speech about staying home in the event of an outbreak because as we've seen with COVID, COVID vaccinations, does, does COVID prevent um, infection or transmission? It doesn't. And guess what? A lot of vaccines uh, work in the same way. Um, so we're, we're uh, looking forward to the opportunity to challenge that portion of the law. And we're hoping okay. that we can possibly in the future get it repealed. All right. So I'll put Cassie's comment up. I lied. I have one more question. <laughs> Actually, it's based <laughs> off her comment. But she says, I've been told my child can't come back to school until my child's shot records are up to date. I've been called more than a few times about this. What does she need to do? What does Cassie need to do if a parent is in that situation? Send in a, a written dissent. Go to healthfreedomla.org under our exemption tab. Um, there's a little blue button that she can hit and it pulls up a PDF copy of our sample exemption form. She can print it out or she can um, you know, copy the language that's on there and submit it to her school and tell them to leave her alone. <laughs> okay, now, but I, I'm going to take this a step further because as we've seen with the city council and all these other government entities, all they have to do is keep breaking the law technically. So what if the school says, well, your child can't come back? Does she contact an attorney? Does she call the cops? I mean, what does she do? She can call uh, Dr. Brumley. Dr. Brumley, um, you know, uh, passed a, uh, what do you call it, a rule change back in January that every school, he added it to Bulletin 741 for both public and non-public schools. Every school has to abide by these laws. And if they don't, they risk accreditation and they risk federal funding. And that goes for private schools as well, because private schools uh, during emergencies or whatnot, they are allotted some federal funding. They lose that if they don't follow the law. Okay. So, so, you know, so many times it seems like, and Jill, you would ag agree with this, that government overreaches and I, I call it being lawless, but they, they overreach simply because the public and people don't we never call their hand on it we we just exactly. we don't question it we just go along and right. uh, i think go ahead I, I just want to encourage parents this, we this is our tagline know your rights protect your freedom 
And uh, if you don't know what your rights are, if you don't let, uh, know what the law is, you don't know how to push back against these tyrants and, and local and state government. Um, so we want to empower people. We have a, an explanation of the law on our website. They're welcome to go to that exemption tab on healthfreedomla.org and learn all about it. Perfect. So, so have you been censored lately anymore? <laughs> Yes, I was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I love the way she said that so innocently. Yes. <laughs> which, which reminds me, I need to send that to my attorneys. Uh, thank you for reminding me. Of that. I, can't, I can't remember what it was that I got censored on um, during session. Um, I did put up, we, we carried some legislation during session that we were very sad didn't get passed. It was, uh, we called it the coroner bill or a voice for the voiceless. Um, it has to do with um, an existing law that requires coroners to uh, launch an investigation for infants um, 12, year, 12 months of age or younger who die suddenly and without explanation the coroner is obligated under the law to do an autopsy. And so we carried legislation, we supported legislation by Representative Beryl Amaday that would require coroners to include an infant's um, auto, um, immunization history in that autopsy. And so we have a form also on our website that shows this, the shot schedule, which is pretty um, I mean, it's intense. There are 81 sh doses of, I think, 15 different vaccinations now from in utero to the age of 18. The wow. center column on that form that's on our website, I'm not sure if you guys can pull it up or not, um, but the center column on that form that shows the entire shot schedule is the in utero from 12 months of age. It's 43 doses of 13 different vaccines in just that first year of life. And we put that up and uh, Meta took it down. Oh, that's interesting. It is interesting. And so, yeah, for that some could... reason, I don't have it right in front of me, but we will make sure and post it and okay. see if we can get it taken down. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Um, so yeah, we I'm still getting censored. Um, lawsuit is still ongoing. You know, we didn't get the the outcome that we had hoped for at the Supreme Court. Um, I have a um, I like the dissent. <laughs> I don't know if you guys had a chance to take a look at it or not. The decision from the Supreme Court. Um, um, just ask my mother, though. <laughs> She'll tell you. I think I think she's pretty proud of pretty proud of me. But um, in the dissent and in the opinion altogether, they mentioned my name a hundred and three times. So it's incredible to think about um, uh, Supreme Court justices discussing my social media posts. So y'all be careful what you put out there. <laughs> we we need to. I need to elevate her picture video up just a little bit we are in the presence of greatness she has been <laughs> mentioned by that. scotus a hundred times <laughs> you, you're in the presence of a loud mouth <laughs> join the crowd you're in perfect company uh, yeah i would agree with that and careful went out the window a long time ago for us <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, but that that court case is ongoing. Unfortunately, they didn't um, they didn't uh, hold the stay against um, you know with the um, preliminary injunction that Judge Doty had issued last year. Um, so we're we're sad about that. But it goes back to Judge Doty. The ball is back in his court, and I'm excited to see because one of the things I've had to explain because so many people were under the impression that the, the case was over when we got that decision from the Supreme Court, but the case itself hasn't even been heard. The only thing in front of the Supreme Court was the preliminary injunction that was issued last July by Judge Terry Doty. And a lot of people don't know that the information in front of the Supreme Court was just information up until like May of 2023. And think about all of the discovery that we got after Elon bought tw Twitter in 2023, 
Um, I, all of that information was after the fact. None of that is in front of the Supreme Court. So we're very hopeful that with extended discovery that will be granted um, right, after, right before the decision was handed down from SCOTUS, uh, you remember um, Fauci's assistant was in front of Congress talking about how they had deleted emails and had learned how to avoid FOIA. Well, my attorney sent a subpoena and asked for all those deleted emails. They even subpoenaed Google to get those deleted emails. So we have all of that to look forward to, to present to Judge Doty. And of course, our case has been enjoined and was enjoined last year with Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s case against the Biden administration. So we go back um, with guns ablazing in front of Judge Doty um, in the near future. Perfect. Well, keep us updated. I will. I will. Thank well, you. Well, thank you for joining us, Jill. And uh, that, you know, the, just I thought that was important that this time of year with kids going back to school, it was uh, relevant that folks needed to hear that as many people yeah. as possible. And hopefully uh, your your words and what y'all are doing at Health Freedom is reaching a lot of parents. Thank you very much. I want to encourage everybody, regardless of your child's vaccination status, don't give the government that information. Submit a dissent, <laughs> be a rebel, say no. Don't give them any information about your child. I mean, if you've gotten every single vaccine, that's fine, but don't tell the government. <laughs> S submit a written dissent every chance you get and just tell them no. Be a rebel. What a, that's a great saying. That's what I should have titled the show, Be a Rebel. Yeah. Amen to that. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jill. You guys are so welcome. Thanks for having me on. It was great talking to you. All right. Thanks, Jill. Well, that was educational as usual. She usually bring, as they say now, brings the receipts. She brings the receipts and she just spits it out there. She's even, she ain't a lawyer, but she's even talking like lawyers now. No She's teleprompter, them, no notes, no nothing. I mean, I've got to them, sit here and look at notes and everything else. All them big words she's throwing out there. I, I'm, I'm sitting here trying to have to look it up in the dictionary. Huh? I, I am going to jump right over here to my little cooler and grab me a bottle of water. Can you take over the cockpit momentarily? Oh. Oh, there you go again. You're bailing I'm on the show. In the middle. You're bailing. unprepared. I've got to make and sure my parachute's on. Okay, well, bail, and I'll just jibber-jabber for a little bit. I'll be bit. back in 30 <clears throat> seconds, maybe 30 seconds. Okay. So, everybody is wondering, you know, I, I, and I don't know, Rex has been monitoring whether or not the Bossier City Council meeting is posted up or not yet. Um, today... On the Bossier City Council, they had a little issue that you might have heard about called term limits on the agenda. They also had another issue uh, about the Charter Commission on there. And uh, I got to say, nothing that transpired today really surprised me. Um, it, it didn't surprise me at all. But what I will say is, is that I think I'm safe to be able to describe um, a lot of elected officials in Bozier as being lawless. Yes, sir. lawless, avoiding the law, breaking the law, however you want to put it to be politically correct or nice. I mean, typically we are not worried about being neither politically correct or nice. But yeah, I was there sitting at the meeting. You were watching online, and I got to say, I just checked again. They don't have it up yet. What's going on? Now, I wonder why they wouldn't want this video to be out there real quick. I mean, you know. Well, I, I'm just maybe thinking that it's not intentional. You seem to be thinking it's not intentional. Well, I don't or know you don't about know. that. Let me, let me share my screen. Hopefully, it's the right one. So this is live on their YouTube page. So let me do a refresh. And you can see if I look in the live, that video is not showing in the live category. If I click over to videos, the most recent one is the July the 30th video. Again, I'm going to refresh just to make sure it's not a browser cache issue. If I go to playlists, this is where it gets interesting, and go to the 2024 archives, 
And notice, it might be a little hard to see for folks, but I'm gonna try to put the little pointer up here. Up here, three unavailable videos are hidden at the very top of the 2024 archives playlist. I'm gonna scroll all the way to the bottom and again, notice the last meeting in that particular playlist is the July the 30th meeting. So, Bossier City IT Department, where the hell is today's meeting? Well, I mean, I, I, I hate to kind of go backwards a little bit, but if I recall correctly, the head of IT when Bozier quit not long ago. Um, oh, well, yeah, I th Bill, think we did. Bill Bell, I think, yeah, I think Bill Bell was the head of IT and he quit. Um, I wonder, but it, I understand the Bozier Parish Community College does all of the videos. They manage all uh, of that. Well, maybe so, but they got to do a better job. I don't care if they're free or not. Um, now, I will say I've got a new camera set up, and after I get a package in tomorrow, I'm going to be full-blown ready. I'm going to start videoing all the meetings, going to all the meetings, just to avoid these shenanigans, because we really needed to be able to show some of the sound bites from today. It would have been just comedy gold for tonight. Well, maybe that's why it's not showing, is so that we won't be able to... Uh, show it tonight and there may be a strategic reason that it's not shown as well, well too well uh, you know the funny thing about strategery like that is if you're not very good at strategery you shouldn't be strategic because as soon as that video comes up and we get it downloaded we can just do another show whenever we want to nah 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 that that's right so we get that video up um maybe we just need to go ahead and do a thursday show and so that we can show everybody what we're going to talk about tonight and we can correct if we make a mistake going off of our memory so all right i want to point out one more thing while i'm on the it department for bozier city hold on just a second hold, hold your thought so i'm going to share my screen again Folks, I want y'all, you, you can do this after the show, or if you got another computer sitting there or something like that, you can do it right now. If you go to the Bossier City Council YouTube channel and you try to subscribe, you'll find that you're not able to do that, that that feature is unavailable. If you try to change it to disable, you get a notification. Notice it just popped up at the bottom down there. This action, let me let me make it do it again. This action is turned off for content made for kids. So you may say, well, wait, why would they be publishing content for kids? What is that all about? I mean, maybe the maybe Wes or the Colonel or you or I or, or Cassie or somebody might get up there and just say something that is completely inappropriate for kids. Well, that's not really how it works. So if you know anything about YouTube, made for kids videos, and this is something you exp explicitly have to check off in either your channel settings or per video. It's made for kids if children are the primary audience and if children are not the primary audience, but the video is still directed to children based on factors such as the subject matter, whether the video has an emphasis on kids' characters, themes, toys, or games, then you should designate it as made for kids. Well, the reason you can't subscribe to their YouTube channel is because they set the whole damn channel is made for kids. And one of the things that made for kids prevents is ads inserted in the video in case it's an inappropriate ad for a kid and subscribing to the damn channel. Come on, Bozier City. Well, you know, Jeff Sadow made a, a post. He had a really great article pointing out the police jury and uh, he's put a link in the comments. You, I, I highly recommend you guys go and read that. He, he was, he was spot on, but it seems like, um, your your local government bodies are going to extreme efforts to try to prevent you from having the ability to go back and or you know look at information look at the council meetings see what they did i mean i don't know there's three videos here that are hid or you know that you just showed with bozier city i didn't even know that that but there's apparently three items that they don't want the public to see for some reason um, you know, it, it, it just seems like our local government is uh, making moves to not be transparent. I mean, 
Who would believe that? Yeah, I can't imagine that. And look, we have given the city of Bossier, I hate saying that, we've given the city of Bossier credit in the past that, you know, they they generally have in the past done a good job of streaming and the videos are available and all that. It just seems like in the last several months and, you know, correlation is not necessarily causation or causation is not necessarily correlation, but it just seems that the closer we get to the term limits finale, the more these shenanigans have been happening. Uh, you know, maybe it's not well, a conspiracy. Maybe it's innocent. You know, maybe their IT staff is just incompetent. Maybe not. Well, if you if you get cut five ginned up here, you know, a few minutes ago, I used the term lawless. And a lot of people find that probably offensive. They probably find that as being a little bit of an extreme. But before we're done, I'm going to let you make the determination whether or not you think the actions in Bossier City are lawless or not. Now, I was thinking to myself today, Rex, and, and you know, you've got me on this AI thing a little bit. You're, you're, you're piquing my interest. And mm -hmm. so I said, well, That's you know, fun. I wonder what AI thinks. I mean, I, I know what I think. I feel like after watching the council meeting today, the first, the word that's just stuck in my mind is lawless. So, but what does AI think? And <laughs> this is the question I posed. I just wanted to know what, what artificial intelligence thought. You want to read it? <laughs> yeah, I got it. So it says, what uh, Duke said prompted chat GPT. What do you call politicians who say we have to follow the law, but then ignore the law for their own self-interest? And ChatGPT's response was, politicians who advocate for following the law, but then ignore it for their own self-interest can be called hypocrites or self-serving. More specifically, they may be labeled as corrupt or unethical if their actions involve exploiting their position for personal gain. <laughs> This is my first time to read this. While, <laughs> while disregarding the legal and ethical standards as they expect others to follow. Another term often used as authoritarian, particularly if they selectively enforce the law to maintain or expand their power. Hell, ChatGPT gets it. Those four morons on our city council can't seem to get it. This is great. Or they either they do get it and they just don't give a damn. Look, I wish I could show it. Did you see? All right, so you know Phyllis reads boisterous and, and the rules of decorum at the beginning of every meeting, right? And there was a point where Bamadon said something completely wrong and honestly stupid. Well, maybe ignorant. And everybody in the room, I mean, even like the Marshall side of the room, said, no, that's not correct, Bubba Don. It wasn't like just me or just the colonel. It was everybody. And so, of course, Queen David, Queen Monty, had to, yeah. had to admonish everybody in the audience and, and have Phyllis, you know, he prompted her to reread it. And so, of course, I blurred it. Well, later on in the meeting, guess whose cell phone went off for like two solid minutes? Guess whose cell phone went off? I, the well, Queen the, I himself. Mean, <laughs> now, in all fairness to all of y'all watching, you know, he he you're right. He he there was a demand to have the rules read, and in the very beginning, Phyllis always says cell phones should be put on silent. But in the middle of the meeting, you're right, his phone went to ringing off and it interrupted the meeting. Everybody had to stop. And you know what? He, well, you were there. He said oh, he yeah. got hacked. He said yeah, he got oh, hacked. Yeah. He did. He had to get Hammond's. Now, hold on just a second. Hold your horses. Give me He's... one second here, because guess what video just showed up? And I'm going to show you all that I'm not cr completely crazy, because it just showed up four minutes ago. Hold on a minute. Let me switch screens. <clears throat> Shares. No, he, guys, he did. He he said, I got hacked. I, I guess I'm hacked or I guess I got hacked or whatever. And, and he's waving his phone. It's ringing. He's trying to silence it and he's waving it around and 
every the focus of the meeting is his cell phone. I mean, Mr. Right. Decorum can't turn his damn phone off. Yeah. But, but, but more importantly to me is, is, I mean, look, now he said he got hacked and I gotta, I gotta confess Rex. Uh Oh, did you do it? I went on the dark web. Oh, I thought it was Juliana trying to call him. Are you sure? Well, that I went on the dark web and that's what was being said on the dark web was, is it was Juliana and then she couldn't get him on the phone. And then supposedly there was a message and uh -huh. she was saying, you know, point of call a point of order, call a point of order and have Phyllis read the rules of decorum again. But he must not have got the message. I mean, it must have got hacked or something. I don't know. Now, see, I'm not crazy. Five minutes ago, the video was posted. You guys aren't getting away with this. We're going to talk about you anyway. So our problem is we don't have our little timestamps and prompts to go up through some of this. Um, well, we don't we don't completely need it. So here's the thing that what y'all need to know, and this is the most important thing, and we're going to break it down if you want to look for a couple of important things. So the the Charter Commission, you know, issue and whether or not to dissolve it came up or not, to which uh, the king was arguing that, you know, we don't have the authority, you know, to dissolve it and, you know, therefore just need to leave it alone, let it go. You know, of course, he doesn't want to dissolve it. He wants to be able to try to regurgitate it and get it going and hope that he can convince Lee Jeter to show up to give all of them a quorum so that they can kill, um, you know, probably term limits or, or, or at least term limits of, with, with retroactivity. So they can try to without, yeah, without retroactivity. Yeah. And, you know, Lee Jeter got up and spoke, um, about it and said, Hey, he said, you know, why don't we just pause this thing? Let the people, Lee made a great point. He did. Why don't we just let the people vote on this petition and have the opportunity to decide this issue? And then the charter commission can reconvene and we will just adopt what the, the people voted on. If they, they have the opportunity to vote for it or vote against it. And if they vote against it, then we'll know to change that portion of it, if they vote for it, we know to just keep it. Well, it's wishful thinking on Lee's part because there ain't no way in heck these guys want that. They don't want that at all, except for Hammonds and Chris Smith. <clears throat> so, you know, they were just, I mean, I can only imagine in the back of their heads, they, they were just laughing their butts all. They probably were finding it to be humorous. Um, Right. And I'm trying to scan through here real quick. I was just trying to find the part where his damn phone kept going. To me, that was the most entertaining part of the whole meeting. Yeah. So, so they ended up voting against, you know, on a, I shouldn't say a party line vote, um, lawless versus the, the unlawful or lawless versus the lawful. I mean, it went down party lines, I think. And, um, then, comes the issue of the term limits petition. So here we are and we've got the petition, you know, um, and as y'all know, at their previous meeting, this city council voted against um, the ordinance. And, you know, then the next thing is, is there has to be a resolution. It's just like the first petition. There has to be a resolution to send it to the bond commission. <clears throat> and you say, yeah, well, that's kind of confusing. Well, why do you have to vote on an ordinance and then vote for a petition? Well, the kind of the reason it has to go that way is because there are two parts to the city charter and I'm going to get, uh, maybe, maybe I should pull that up and then you share my, uh, standby guys. Let me get yeah. this pulled up and I'm going to show y'all. 48. I'm going to show you and I'm going to break it down for you in, in detail and go word by word. All right. So I think you can share my screen now, Rex. Okay. Let's see. Let me go over here to just a second. I got to get the right button pressed. Share to screen. There we go. All right. 
So we're going to jump down to, I'm going to break this out and I'm going to explain this to you guys in detail. We're going to jump down to page 48, if I can get down there very fast. Um, boop, 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 boop. Just stand by almost there. Then I got to turn around and then go, once I read this part to you, then I've got to jump way back up to the top. Okay. So on page 48, chapter 21, section 2101, you know, it talks about how amendments to the charter can be made. And, you know, you see there how proposed amendments to the charter may be proposed as follows. A, by the city council in the form of an ordinance, except that it shall not be subject to veto, embodying the proposed amendment and providing to the submission to a charter review commission. That's the first part. The second part is part B, which is... I don't know if, uh, can you see that clearly? Yeah. Okay. We'll uh, see all one. Yeah. The section B by yeah. petition of the electors is outlined in section 5.01 signed, examined, amended, and certified. Right. So by petition of electors, that's what we did. That's what's part of the city charter that we exercised. So let's go back to section 501 which will be bear with me on page 15 let me scroll way back up here and let me read that section to you and break it down to the two parts regarding the ordinance and regarding the re resolution and where you find that is right here section 501 initiating ordinance referendum for amendment or repeal any so the first part is going to be the ordinance, and they voted on this part last week. Any proposed ordinance may be submitted to the city council by petition signed by electors equal in number to 33% of the votes cast for all candidates for mayor at the last preceding contested general election. Where the petition contains a request that the ordinance be submitted to a vote of the people, if not passed without veto by the city council, the city council shall either pass without veto the ordinance without alteration within 30 days after attachment of the, the certificate of the registrar of voters to the petition or forthwith after the registrar of voters has attached his or her certificate to the petition. The city council shall call an election to be held within 90 days thereafter. <clears throat> so they, they, did voted against the ordinance you know that that was the the first part there's the second part at the special or general city election the ordinance shall be uh, i read it wrong anyway the the part is is to you know if they do, if they're going to vote against an ordinance in which they have that right to do it the second part is is they have to send it to a vote of the people and I have to read it again because I get to, I can't read it exactly right. Um, uh, well, let's see. They sh they shall. All right. Where the petition contains a request that the ordinance be submitted to a vote of the people, if not passed without veto by the city council, the city council shall shall either pass without veto of the ordinance without alteration within 30 days after attachment of the certificate of the registrar of voters to the petition or forthwith that means hurry the blank up after the registrar of voters has attached his or her certificate to the petition the city council shall call an election to be held within 90 days thereafter that's the second part which is the resolution that has to be to to call the election, you have to pass a resolution. To call an election, you have to make that, you know, you have to send that to the bond commission. To send something to the bond commission, you have to pass a resolution. Well, they voted against that today as well, too. So when they say that, you know, and this was another part of the, this was another part of the council meeting, they were talking about all how we, you know, we've got to follow the dot the I's and cross the T's or else we'll get sued. And we, you know, we don't want, we don't want to be sued. We don't want any litigation and all this. And right here, you, you, you got two parts. You either vote for the ordinance. And if you agree with it, they don't agree with it. 
And if you don't agree with it, then you shall send it to a vote of the people. Well, they just said, to hell with you. We're not going to do that. We're, we're not going to do we're our taking job. taking choice C. We're not doing either. <laughs> we shall not follow the, the charter. We're just going to yeah. ignore the charter. We're going to ignore the people and do what the hell we want to do. And, you know, ultimately, the, the truth of the matter is, is these lawless individuals, and they can say whatever they want to say, it, they're lawless because they're not following the charter. They, they they want to hold all of us accountable. Mm -hmm. They want to make all of us follow the wait, rules to wait, wait. Key, See, but but they won't follow them the, themselves. But I got to argue with you just on a little yeah. minor point there because words matter. Remember, our buddy Richard okay. Ray tells us all the time they're not completely lawless. They're selectively lawless. They're the law is fine and dandy when they want somebody to not be boisterous during the middle of the meeting, but it's not fine and dandy when Queen Monty himself cell phone keeps ringing incessantly. It's okay for them to follow the charter when they want to do certain things like having a charter commission that's going to try to get the retroactivity out of the term limits, which is the big hang up. But it's not okay to follow the charter when it says you shall do something. See, they're selectively lawless. I just wanted to point that out. And that's even worse. They they, they are. Jeff Sadow made a good point. He says, so uh, we can't get rid of the Charter Review Commission because it might be against the charter. But we can't ignore the charter when it comes to the petitioned amendment. Hypocrites. <laughs> Who knew that ChatGPT would be such a soothsayer of Mr. Sadow's comment? Hypocrite. There's that word but, again. You know, but but for the people out there that are watching that may not have been in tune to this thing for from the beginning, and you may not have completely understand it, because look, look, I just read that and I got myself twisted up reading it. It's just kind of the way that it goes. But can you see that there's two parts? I'm going to go back. The first part is the ordinance to which they've already voted on and they voted it down. It has to have right. two readings and it says in there 30 days, they've got 30 days and the 30 days has not. And that was a point of contention today at the, at the uh, city council meeting, Charles Jacobs was asked specifically some, you know, pointed questions regarding all this business. And one of them was, and he kept pointing out that they have 30 days to pass an ordinance. So, Today is the 13th, the 30 day deadline. It was submitted on July the 25th. They've got till August the 25th for there to be 30 days. But again, it doesn't say in here, it says that, you know, they, they take, take the matter up and they've already voted against the ordinance. Does anybody, does anybody believe that if they put the term limits petition up, uh, again, as an ordinance, that they're going to vote for it. Who? Oh, yeah. Anybody in the comments that believes that? You know, there's there's 120 of y'all. Any of y'all that believe that, I want to know who you are, and I want you to convince me that Bubba Don, Darby, Jeffrey, Maggio, and Montgomery are going to vote for an ordinance. You know, at, at any point forward. Right. I, and, and look, folks, as we've said it over and over, we you know. We did not expect them to just throw up their hands and say, oh, okay, we give up. We'll have term limits and be just hunky-dory about it. They're going to do everything they can because they think that nobody's going to challenge them legally. And look, I'll give the colonel credit. He said it in no uncertain terms. You're teeing this up for a lawsuit. Basically, he said, you're about to get sued. As a matter of fact, I suggested he call the attorney during the meeting. Well, and here's the other thing for all of you out there in the public. This is what your elected officials think. They don't follow the law. The law, the law is set out there apparently not for them. It, it only applies to us. It only applies to the public. They apparently are exempt from following the law. So, you know, Jacobs was trying to suggest that they have 30 days to take, you know, the 30 day, the clock is not up. Well, they've already voted on the ordinance. They've already voted against it. 
at that point, they have to send it to a vote of the people. It says in here, shall, you know, shall. and shall. And they voted against doing that today. And some people think, you know, that I, I'm, I'm going to tell you what I think. Here's what I think. What I think they just said, you know what? Screw all those people. Let's just make them have to go get an attorney, spend money. It's just about forcing us to spend money and they're going to piss away your tax dollars. Well, That's not just that. Done, just like before. Not just that. We're spending money twice because we as a group will have, as a coalition, will have to spend money for the lawyer, which arguably when we win would recoup that. But guess who's paying for that? All of us taxpayers. Oh, no, 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 no. You, we're not going to sue them and recruit, re, recoup the money that we have to spend. And the taxpayers are not going to recoup the money that these guys are going to you know, piss away on having to defend this case. Everybody loses here, but they don't care. These lawless people, they don't care. They just want to spend. That's Bubba Don. That's you. Lawless. You know, uh, Maggio, that, that's you. Lawless um free that's you the king i mean he knows it already he doesn't care but you know that it's not they don't care they just want to force us to have to spend more money and uh, okay well merry christmas we're gonna do it um yeah and, and and but chris smith asked some really great questions at the end and i suspected that that's why the video wasn't up there because maybe they're editing those comments out Maybe, but he he got Jacobs to acknowledge on the record in front of everybody that he couldn't find any flaw in the petition. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. right. He absolutely he did. Couldn't find so, any flaw in the petition. There, There's no reason to not uh, take the action as prescribed in the city charter to move the thing forward. So where do we go? I, I'm as we kind of start wrapping up here in a few minutes or whenever we do, I'm going to show Jacobs, I mean, uh, Montgomery and his damn cell phone, but where do we go from here? So surely we've got well, to be able to give everybody watching a little bit of hope that this was all anticipated. This is all part of the master plan. Yeah. The, look, People should not uh, in any way be down about this. Um, in fact, we have anticipated them being like this. Um, I'm actually, I'm actually glad because it shows uh, all of the people out there in the public. It shows you uh, the disdain they have. They they can pat themselves on the back. They can say that they're th this is not service. They're not serving you, the citizen. They're serving themselves. And this right here is the icing on top of the cake that, it, you know, when they won't even follow the charter, I mean, and, and they're not serving the people, they're serving themselves and serving their self-interest. It doesn't get any clearer than this. And I, I've got a, I've got another cut in, in the notes on another replay uh, on another council meeting from before with the king talking about how they must follow the law. I mean, it was talking on a different subject, but I think it's pretty amazing. You know, in one breath, they say, oh, we got to follow the law. We got we we got to do it right. And and I, I have went back. I mean, a lot of y'all watching, y'all may remember this, you know, Councilman Maggio, he made a comment regarding the petition, the first petition. He's like, look, you know, if it's not right, you know, you if 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 you got a good petition, you know, you bring it back and and you know the people should vote on it. They should get the opportunity to vote on it, or whatever. I can't find those comments. I'm going to find it. I know we got it. There, but I just there. Find it. Yeah. So let me share my screen out here. Hold on a second. Hopefully this works. Hey, it works. But apparently, uh, but apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's the uh, here's the quote from the queen himself let me make sure i've got the volume turned up here let's see if this is it if i may make Please. a comment sir yeah. uh, i'll defer to our city attorney um, we have to abide within the laws and we cannot be prejudiced from one establishment to another so we have to apply the law <clears throat> equally 
is some people might not agree with alcohol, but we can't say you can have it and you can't. If they qualify underneath what the law says, then we are obligated to pass that. Otherwise, we subject ourselves to potential litigation for discrimination. There you go. Now, that was talking in the in, uh, context of the liquor license, but you're right. You're absolutely correct, Duke. The principle is still the same. He he can't stop. He can't stop somebody from wanting to sell liquor from one person to the next of them. He, boy, he can't do that. But when it comes to stopping you, the public, from voting on something that follows the letter of the law, you know, that personally affects him, Oh, oh, heck yeah. He can do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In a heartbeat. So, all right. Uh, let me switch screens back over. I can't stand it. I've got to be able to show you the phone situation. All right. Hold on. Let me, uh, let me switch over. Let me click. I think I've got it over here. Yes, I do. And let me, I'm going to go back to the 102 mark. So I would encourage everybody um, later on after the show tonight or tomorrow when you're really bored, go back and listen to that city council meeting. There was a lot in there and there are some real gems. Uh, we'll talk about it some more, but watch this. Uh, let's see how well this does here. That uh, is correct. Do you, with but, the position you have in hand, do you notice any see him reaching for his a phone? red flag to you? There, I, I don't see any defect in the form of the petition itself. The last issue, when it first came, the first effort. Now, you can't hear it in here, but it was loud. Like, noticeably loud. Failed to include the year of birth, which was... Okay, so that's the first oh. time Juliana tried to call it. You you can you you can hear it at some point. I mean, I heard it, so it's got to yeah. be on there. It ends yeah, up so, loud. It, even Hammonds is like has to bend up. Yeah. So let me jump up now. This is the next one. And it goes to the um, secretary. Know, somebody's uh, hacked my phone. It's my, look at it. It's on silent. It's, it's my, Point of order. Point of order. <laughs> well, did it? <laughs> this is unbelievable. But unbelievable. So, and then it goes to the Secretary of State, and then his proper. No, so, no rules of decorum for him. No, it doesn't matter for the Queen. He just gets to do what he wants. It's a set of standards for everybody else, but no set of standards for him. Right. Right. Uh, and also, I want to. All right, 3352. Hold on. I've got one more shot that I want to show. 33. Let me. I'm having to do this the manual way. Okay. So, this was the vote to call for the question. The Queen himself made a motion to call the question. Now, what that means simply in Robert's Rules of Order is. You can make a motion to call for the question. It requires a second. And then, if I remember right, a two-thirds majority had to vote for it. And that ends debate on a topic. And you have to go ahead and vote on the motion at hand. Is that pretty close to right, Mr. Lowry? Yep, 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 uh, yep. Okay. And you can see the vote right here. So, David was calling for the question on the, let's see, was it on the, on the uh, counts? canceling or disbanding of the charter commission okay well <laughs> three people voted against it so his motion to call the question was squashed which meant debate could continue about the charter commission and it was funny because you should have seen you had to be there to see jeff free's face because jeff free voted against calling for the question and so did vince maggio which meant they could keep on debating over the Charter Commission and term limits and retroactivity. It was just spectacular. <clears throat> and and to which, you're right there, you ought to uh, play it a little bit and jump up to where Chris's comments were because he had some pretty, uh, pretty good comments regarding 
it, I, I think that that part needs to play. It's right there. Okay, let All me right. see if let me see if we can find it here. Okay, so this is the vote for calling for the question. So we need to vote again. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Bubba Don doesn't even know the procedure, so you're saying we need to vote again? Here we go. He's just, he just following the law. All right. If you didn't understand it, I mean, can we vote again, or do we need to? Nope. You you had a vote in front of you that was calling <coughs> for the, the question, question yeah. only. Vote once. As Mr. Smith pointed out and Ms. McGraw pointed out, that requires a two-thirds uh, uh, two majority vote, which would be so five out of seven. So if anybody else wishes to speak on that, calling for the end of debate and calling for a vote, then they're now free to do so because the calling for the question itself did not pass. Yeah, it failed. At the end of debate, you know, pursuant to the regular city council rules, then, um, so, then, then you still have to vote on the second reading of the repeal ordinance in front of you. But we still have discussion. Correct. So we're still in the discussion period, but nothing stops anyone from calling for the question again. Yeah. All right, Mr. Chris. Mr. Smith. Go ahead. All, I, all I wanted to say in Here we go. This is good. Of, good call, uh, dude. This, this ordinance is this charter commission, uh, specifically for me personally, has gotten very personal. Um, I'm not on the charter commission, and I can only assume it's because of one particular issue that Mr. Jeter referenced. Um, you know, I've somebody, maybe it's somebody in this audience, maybe it's somebody sitting up here, maybe it's somebody on the Charter Commission. Uh, somebody filed an ethics complaint against me with the state board, Louisiana State Board of Ethics based on my appointment to the Charter Commission. That appointment was not done in malice. It was approved by the city attorney's office. It was frankly approved by all <coughs> seven of us twice. But I can only assume that because of one particular issue, they thought that filing an ethics complaint would be a, a quick, easy way to uh, rid my voice on the Charter Commission. I've been attacked personally via email and text and social media. Uh, there have been other, other, thing, other attacks against me as it relates to involvement with the Charter Commission this has gotten this has gotten way too political over one singular issue and it is uncalled for it is unbecoming of <coughs> whoever is behind it and frankly this charter commission needs to end because it is getting nowhere fast and if And if we are afraid over litigation over this, then there are other things that we can be afraid over litigation on. But I think that this Charter Commission is not serving its intended purpose. And that is to look at the issues that face Bossier City today, how we can address those issues, how we can move forward and better our city. We're not doing that. We're, we're not bettering our city through this Charter Commission. I thought when it started, we would. I had high hopes. I had been wanting to do a charter commission since the day I walked in these doors. But all I've seen is personal attacks against people. And it's not just me. There are other, there are other people that are per being personally attacked over their position, either for or against a certain item. <coughs> it's unbecoming and we need to be the leaders that Bossier City elected us to be and say that today we're going to make that stop. So, Well said, Mr. Smith. And you know what? They, the, them law and order types on there, they all listened to him, and they said, we're going to make it stop. We're voting against sending term limits to the vote of the people as prescribed in the charter. We're not going to follow that stupid law. We're not doing it. Yeah, I just I just widened the screen a little bit. You can see Queen Monty's stupid face, and of course Free was sitting there twiddling his pen, and Darby's half asleep over there behind his mask. <clears throat> yeah, all the the Law and Order types, they all of them, they just you know, hey, um, Vince Maggio, Jeff Free, Bubba Don, Darby, and the King himself, Law and Order, right there, guys.
Yeah. So I think that's a good place to actually end the show. What do you think, Mr. Lowry? Do we have more that we need to talk about? I I think we in there too. I mean, look, we weren't prepared. We weren't able to uh, have the video, whether it was intentional or not. We don't know. Um, you know, we could uh, put it together for Thursday, but I mean, guys, y'all go watch it yourself. Don't, you don't have to listen to us. Take our word for it. I mean, take, take a barf bag with you. Cause you're probably going to be sick. I mean, you know, these are your elected officials. These are your people who tell you in one breath that they're doing everything for your interest and but yet they handily discard the will of you know a, a three thousand people or uh, citizens of Bozier. they they got no problems in just dismissing all those people and just saying screw the law we're not going to follow it we're going to do what we want to do and why just for their own self-interest. That's why, as chat GPT said, you know, <laughs> that's great. I'm going to, I'm going to put the logo on and we're posting that. That's awesome. All right. Anything else for this evening? That's all I got. Well, folks, we appreciate everybody watching. We have had, Oh, I don't know, somewhere hovering around a hundred, hundred plus people watching for quite a while. We were bumping a hundred, I don't know, 125, 130 when Jill was on. We appreciate each and every one of you. And we appreciate the civility and the comments and the good commentary, because you, as you know, our rule is keep it relatively civil in the comments. And I mean, every show, Pretty much everybody is held to that. So we appreciate that very much. Good night. hundred and we're, something people. I like here. closing the show over a hundred. <laughs> All right. Let me see if I can find the right button. I hid my buttons again. <laughs> we're out of here. Well, we can, we can just sit here and be stupid. <laughs> yeah, we can sit here and, and banner back and forth. And uh, what the heck? I mean, we could do this for hours. I mean, right, anyway. No, we could just sit here until we get to be like Elon and Trump and get a, a couple of million, 20 million yeah. people on. Yeah. yeah. Let's wait on a million people. We might be skeletons with cobwebs sitting here, but a million people. Yeah. Good night. <laughs>